a quick video here. Somebody's asking me if I still do one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So if, the answer is the quick answer is no. Uh, I did it for years. I did it in 2013. So I'll tell you my story really quickly about Skillstack. Um, and I'm going to try to keep it under five, 10 minutes. Uh, but some, I don't know if I've ever actually made a quick video about this. So you can still go out there to the website. Um, but if you go out to skillstack.sh, you can see the leftovers of the company that I used, or IO, sorry, SH is our server. Uh, you can see the leftovers of, of the old um, site. And this site is this is, 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 is dated. This is a website. I need to update it. And it's uh, so back then I used to do uh, mentoring and I'll tell you the quick story really quick. But I mean, one of my greatest successes is, is listed front and center here. You know, I've helped people. I've helped hundreds of people get jobs. Um, people are going to think I'm grifting. This was legitimately a question. I don't know if I should put the chat on the screen so you guys can see that somebody actually asked this question and they don't think it's just an excuse for me to talk about myself. What other reason is there for you to do a YouTube channel? <laughs> so, so I am going to talk about myself, but I'm going to, I'll just tell you what happened. Okay. So in 20, in 2012, 20, about, so, 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 let me give you the fast forward thing. Okay. So 20, 2007, uh, stuff started getting bad, uh, with my wife and I left the Mormon church in about 2009, 2008, something like that. And then I, um, I ended up getting a divorce in 2010 and then I got remarried in like 2000. 12 ish 13 actually and almost immediately we stayed in an apartment and everything and almost immediately my wife uh who grew up in your in new york and was very acquainted with urban living and everything suggested i mean i i told her about my dream of always wanting to teach um because there was nobody in 2013 2012 was teaching anybody there was no mentoring going on there was no there was no computer instruction in school at all if you were really really lucky in america you could you had a ap computer science um you know, if you were lucky and you got to code really horrible Java and learn single inheritance and, and get things wrong if you answered that, you know, indexes start with zero, which they do. And there's a story about that. <laughs> we, I had students get questions wrong because they said indexes started with zero and because they wanted them to answer one. It's completely stupid. So I, it was so, in fact, I even talked to the creator. I was so, um, desperate to make a difference and help because and very seriously i don't I, my mantra don't get back get busy i i i really put my money where my mouth is it took i took about um forty fifty thousand dollars worth of money out of my retirement early i took a huge hit on that I took about a 20 percent loss on it 20 20 to 40 percent loss on the money because it was my retirement money but i took it out early because i wanted to start a company to do this and i did and i uh, i did it for a year in 2013 and eventually i quit my job at ibm uh for, during the my uh, my manager actually cried on that phone call uh, when that happened. They were really sad, literally cried, and um, and so I said, "Fine, I gotta I gotta make a difference. I gotta do something here." And so my wife said, "You need to go do this," and so we found a townhome uh, in Cor in Cornelius. Uh, um, we found a townhome in Cornelius. You can go see it actually on Instagram, Instagram dot com Skillstack. And, uh, this is, this is, uh, this is, this is after we had to move. I'll tell you that story later. So this was, uh, this is, uh, this is our little place that we had where I did the mentoring and, um, and we had game nights, uh, we had all kinds of things. This was like actually a game night, but we would do game development and we do Minecraft development and we do Minecraft server loading. We do hacking competitions. We do, we would do hacking for fun. That's our doggy. Uh, but we had these, you know, really great game nights, um, <laughs> Sean and yeah, we played over, I mean, we did, this is a fun night. So, but, um, and so I, I mean, I, I look at this very fondly, especially about this time. All these kids are all in college now, most of them, and, uh, they wanted to do great things, but so that's what's up with the question about the one-on-one -on -one mentoring thing. So this was obviously not one-on-one -on -one mentoring. This was like one to three. When I started out, it was one to two. And I hired TAs. This is my son, Ben. He was, a, he, was a, he was an instructor. and But then after this, and this is where I was going with this, after this, we got kicked out of, of Skillstack. Uh, this is the back end of Skillstack. Welcome to Skillstack. God, I miss it so bad. It was so much fun. And um, I want you to see what we had to do. We had to... Um, there's... There, we had to um, abandon it, and uh, 
the this this is it. Those are nails, by the way. And uh, we had a big drama, and our landlord in the middle of the business week in a summer camp and everything, they started ripping the roof off with no notification whatsoever. And this is what I had to deal with. And here it is. We were informed of our closed out front of our business by the roofers and landlord. Sorry, we have to guess that the rear entrance is safe to enter. We do not have not heard anything. So, so my landlord destroyed my business during that week or so. And I got so upset that, uh, I mean, this guy had just told us like a week before that, that he was going to renew our five-year lease. And I have, my wife and I, you know, we both heard it. And then he did this. And then right after that, because I got bent out of shape about this and I posted this, he told us that he wasn't going to renew our lease. And so he kicked us out. And I was oh, suddenly without a, without a company uh, or a place to live because I lived above it. And it's a true story. That's exactly how it happened. And, um, and so I, we went on to, um, to, I mean, we, we moved over July 5th weekend, our entire house in two nights. We were up until like 4 a.m. trying to get, and we, we, my wife, thank God, she managed to find this little teeny tiny house in the middle of Davidson and we rented a U-Haul and we moved our, we moved everything in like three or four days over July 4th weekend. Um, because this is my business. This is my only business. And so we went here and then for a long time we were in this uh, this little house, and uh, and that worked well for a while. But I didn't obviously I didn't have the capacity to do a classroom, so I did one on one mentoring. And so we started, and then COVID hit. Amongst all this, all of this thing started to hit at the same time. So this was the last like real group camp we had. This was a Minecraft. This is a game camp that I sold before we moved, and we did it. We did a game camp in this little front room that I converted over. Um, and university, why not the university? <laughs> we'll talk about that. Um, so, so this, um, but I was able to fulfill all those summer camps uh, from our new location without missing a beat. And, uh, and so then we went to, um, uh, and, and this is me cleaning up the room and everything and stuff like that. But it became clear that based on the, um, that based on the, uh, the, 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 the driveway and the traffic situation that, that I didn't even know if I was zoned for, uh, that I couldn't have nine people in a camp every time. So, so I decided to move to one-on-one -on -one mentoring and I tested that for a while. And at first it was one and two, and then it went to one-on-one. -on -one. And the reason for that is because when I had two people there, I would have one person feel bad because they weren't getting the attention of the other one. It was always the same thing. And then they would end up going away and they, they would get mad or something like that. It just, the dynamic just didn't work. And that was when I realized that the real magical um, thing was, was one-on-one. -on -one. But obviously that meant instead of taking 150 students, I could only take like 60. And cause, I mean, and I worked, I worked 10 hours a day on Saturday and Sunday and eight hours a day, every other day of the week. Uh, in order to keep that capacity going so that I could actually pay the bills and everything. Um, and that was at 50 bucks, 60 bucks an hour. And uh, because, I mean, you know, there's a lot of overhead when you're running your own business and stuff. And that we didn't have insurance during that time. So, I mean, it was successful. We didn't, other than the, the getting screwed over by the accountant, which I just don't even want to talk about it. They let our taxes lapse several times in a row. And then we ended up getting like a $15,000 lien of taxes because of our stupid accountant. Uh, and I mean, it was just, a, it was just a, you know, just a, so the bottom line, the, the takeaway from this is no, I don't do one-on-one -on -one mentoring anymore. I also strongly advise against starting a business for yourself. I don't care how well-intentioned you are. I don't care how much you think you can do it unless you are going to Silicon Valley venture capital and you have tricked some, which is mostly what they do. Twitter was, I mean, look how stupid Twitter was and it got millions of dollars of funding, right? Think about that for a second. Millions of dollars of funding to do Twitter. They had to pitch some stupid bankers on it or, or venture capital and they got it, right? So the, the people who succeed, unfortunately, and even them, most of them fail too. They spend all their series A, it's so an entire, you know, comedy series about how stupidly screwed up Silicon Valley is.
because all this money is floating around trying to get, you know, everybody's betting on who's going to make it big, but there's no money to, to be given for anybody who's doing education. And there's definitely not money for people that are doing one-on-one -on -one specialized education because there's no, there's no cash in it. There's no big money in it. Right. So, so you are out there fighting for yourself. So unless you're independently wealthy, you can't really make it happen. And that, that was really the destruction of a dream for me and, and a big, big, big fucking reality check because even though i made it work for nine years uh it just it there's just no way i mean we were so innovative and i mean we i i our kids influenced the entire region they went on to to um yeah it, it they um they we went they went on to uh, start coding clubs in every major school in the region. Uh, I went on to teach at private schools and I helped them get their programs going. I was an associate consultant for, as somebody mentioned, for several colleges. Um, I taught game development at the college for a while. And I mean, I taught web development uh, at the college for a while as well. And, and so it just became, um, it, yeah, it just, it just became really obvious that society didn't want this to exist just like society doesn't like schools to exist and that was really really scary and sad um yeah what youtube and twitch are great for education so this is why i'm here now right so so the year after covid i mean during covid we were still doing one-on-one -on -one, and then i had to move to remote one-on-one -on -one, which was even harder Right. And it, by, by the way, it worked fine. I, I was actually all set up to do COVID before COVID hit. Thank God. I was all set up to do it. And so I was able to do remote and I did. I did a lot of remote mentoring for people uh, all over the world, really. We had people uh, as far away as um, Brussels that I was doing one on one mentoring with. And I kept that model going for a long time, for, you know, well into 2020, 2021. In fact, some of the some of the people came on here. I'd actually stream them while we were doing our one on one mentoring. And uh, but but, you know, the, the, the money just wasn't the same as, you know, back here when I have like a whole room full of people and, you know, we're doing the development together and stuff like that. Uh, uh, so, yeah. And. And I mean, Twitch was just a natural way to go. I mean, look at that. They made us bring all of our, they made us bring all of our plants in the house. Yeah. This is what I woke up to. The guy literally destroyed my business. Like, and he just did not care. When my wife brought it to him, she goes, you know, next time you might want to empathize with your customers or your renters. You know what he said? Those are all t-shirts, by the way. He said, I don't do empathy. That's what he said. God bless America. Uh, I can't think about it too long because if I do, I want to kill somebody. <laughs> I didn't say I'm going to kill somebody. I say I'm going to want, you know, they, there's a saying about entrepreneurs, right? Uh, that entrepreneurs get into it so much because their creation is literally their child. Skill stack was my child. Um, it is, it was an amazing, fantastic thing that, in some cases, literally saved the lives of people. I had people there that were victims of domestic abuse. I had people there who were victims of sexual abuse. I had people that could come to there for a safe space, and and we were there for them. Our community was there for them. Nerds, geeks, intelligent people, people from broken homes, people who were neurologically you know, diverse. Uh, we had uh, probably 20% of the people that came to my group were autistic. And all of these people had a safe place. And this one fucking asshole destroyed the whole fucking thing and if you don't think i want to put a bullet in his head and i know my wife's going to come in she's like you need to calm down this guy this rich piece of shit liar did this to my business it, and it, it, it it is it is tantamount to killing my child because I had spent money and time and effort and sweat to build up this community and to build up this entire thing and the entire thing was torpedoed by this money-grubbing, piece-of-shit, capitalist, lying real estate agent or, or uh, lender who kicked me out and destroyed my company. And there's nothing I can do about it. So, so I know. I'm sorry. Dude, I... And he said, well, we can't, you can't be a renter and have, and have, I think, you know what? I was like, do you have any idea the impact that you're having on these people? He had no, no desire to know or care. So I know I'm not supposed to, I'm not supposed to curse. Okay. I won't, I won't curse. All right. I'll stop cursing, but I got to tell you, 
I have very, very, very strong feelings about this. And my life has been full of stuff like this where I've done everything right. I've, I've done everything in my power to do the right thing. And at my own expense, you know, emotionally, personally, physically, financially. And then this happens. And then something like this happens. And it doesn't just happen once. It happened twice in a row. So so right after, I mean, because we, we, when we went to the, uh, when we went to this, um, when we went to this other place, right? When we went to this other place, we're like, oh, great. At least, you know, we'll make this house work. We'll make this this little house work and it'll be great. And and they promised us. They said, oh, no, no, we're, you know, we're in this for long haul. And they promised us a five-year contract. They kicked us out in a year. In a year. We were only there a year and they kicked us out. My wife dumped $4,000 into renovations on the yard that people stopped on the street. They would come and talk to us. Like, oh, my God, you've done so many things. I was like, honey, you sure you want to spend all that money on this yard? It's not ours. We're just renting. She goes, yeah, it, gives me, it makes me happy and everything. Four grand. She, they redid everything. We redid. We had flooding and everything that we fixed ourselves because they wouldn't fix it. And then after a year and a half, after the COVID thing, the guy says, I want to liquidate the asset. That's exactly what he said. And the woman who sold us the place, the agent or the intermediate person, she was crying. She was like so sad telling us. She's like, I'm so sorry. I know you guys depend on us. Everything. I was like, she, the guy didn't care. He didn't care. He kicked us out again. So now we are in this apartment. Now we're in this apartment. And, and, and I tried my hardest to keep it going remotely through the apartment. And that worked. It worked for a long time. But it became clear that if we wanted to, to move on, that we had to, play, we had to play the American game. And the American game is very simple work for a big ass fucking corporation making way more money than you probably deserve and then use that money to fund the things that actually matter work at evil corp and just own it and and, and as soon as you own the fact that that is the reality of america that that is truly what america is about america is about unfettered greed it's not about helping people. It's not about making people grow. It's not about the social good. It's about one thing, cash. That's the only thing that matters. And that is the only thing that fucking matters in America is cash. That's it. And so you can, this whole idea of the American dream is absolute fucking bullshit. It's total bullshit. The idea that you can work hard and you can make it in America and that you can put your own money out and you can sacrifice and all of that is a total lie. And the first people who understand this will be able to realize it and they'll be able to do different things. So the better course of action here would have been, and I'm going to say it again, the better course of action would have been instead of taking out my retirement early, taking a penalty for using my own money, right? Right. The better thing to have done would have been to upgrade, to go into work for a nice cushy bank job and and done the absolute minimum to make thousands, thousands and thousands of dollars and done this on the side. Had I had I done that from the first, I would be swimming in money right now instead of in debt and have a tax lien on my house because because of what I did, because I went through it the right way. I went through it. Oh, I'll be the entrepreneur thing. I did. I, I even went to the bank. I went to Bank of America. I said, look, I am starting a business. I'm making a big difference in this area. Look at all the people that I've helped. I could really use some financial help. And they're like, I'm sorry, you don't qualify for any kind of loan whatsoever because the bank doesn't give a shit about making a difference. They don't care. They don't care. They can show you whatever they want. They really don't give a shit. They're about profit. <sighs> So the answer is no, I don't do what I'm on mentoring anymore. But the reason is complicated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't, you can't do the right thing. You can't do the good thing. You have to do the evil thing. You have to Robin Hood that shit. If you don't Robin Hood it in America, you can't do anything. If you don't figure out some way to play the game and manipulate the whole system... So that you can take those resources and use them for things that matter. You can't. I know it's not just America, but, but in America, it's specifically pronounced. It's very, very pronounced in America. And, and so all of these people, I'm very happy to say, some of whom they're stopping here. I was, just, I was just with Wit the other day when we were down to Charlotte. I mean, these people, their lives have been changed. And that's what really matters the most to me. They, they have... They tell me all the time. I just I keep getting these emails from people saying, "Hey, I just want to check in and let you know what's what I'm doing, and where I'm at, and what's going on." And and they they come in sometimes. They come into the Twitch chat, and their 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 lives have been massively impacted. And when I die, 
uh, that's the thing that I'll remember. That's the thing that I'll hold on to is that, you know, these people have done things that, that, that would never just never have been possible. And I had to do it at my own, unfortunately, sacrifice myself for it because there's just no way that, that I'll ever recover from this. I mean, from the stuff that's gone down now. So the best I can do, in fact, I'm, that's not fair. Right now I'm making so much money working for a rather large corp- multinational corporation that, 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 uh, you know, our, our debt will be gone probably in a year. So I'm making a ton of money because I'm working for corporate America and, and, and I, and I love it. But, but the reason you see me stream all the time and you see me on Twitch and you see me obsess about making tools and things that can change the world and writing a book and all that stuff is because what I'm, what I'm figuring out is that those are the ways that at least America has decided that you are allowed to contribute right? You're allowed to contribute if you follow our rules, if you follow America's capitalist shit rules about how to do things. And that means if you are not making money for a big corporation, you do not matter. You just don't matter. You're either a football player or a sports player making crazy ass money, or you're working for some tech company that's overly funded or a bank or a big infrastructure company of some kind. I'm not going to give away where I work. Uh, as you do it their way, you have to play their game. If you play their game, you make crazy, crazy money. And then you take that money and you do whatever you want with it. The amount of money I make per hour is absolutely ridiculous right now. If you compare it to what I was making per hour doing this and sacrificing every free second of my time and the amount of money that I was making, uh, while I was at IBM and when I was at Nike, even the, the amount of money that you make, uh, is, is just crazy. The way you play their game is you learn what they want. You, 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 you do things that make them, I made IBM millions and millions of dollars. I built their, their infrastructure for, for virtual server administrator that they sold to people. I forgot how, who knows how much money they sold it to them for. So, you know, the other way you can make money is to, is to create stuff that makes money when you're not doing anything. And that's where books and stuff come in. But as, but, um, yeah. So, so books are really the only way to, to make money in my opinion. I mean, books and things that can make money on the side, it's like passive income kind of thing. So I know you didn't want that full mouthful, but when they, when somebody asks me a question, do I do, do I still do one-on-one mentoring? The answer is no. And, and I, and I have a lot of strong emotion about it. I do have a Patreon, but, but what, if you want to help me and I, honestly, this is not me grifting, but if you want to help me, the best way to do it is GitHub. Uh, the second best way is, um, probably, I mean, you just do PayPal direct if you want, but I have that stuff on there, but, but GitHub is, is the, 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 the best way to sponsor me, uh, because you get to, you get to look, I swear to God, I did not do this to ask for sponsorships. That's not what I was doing it for. But if you, if you go to, if you go to, to, um, if you go to, to Art of X Rob on GitHub, that's. When when you sponsor me here, you get uh you get credit too. You get you get a little icon if you want. You get a little icon here, and you can decide how much to sponsor me for. And I sponsor other people too. Uh, Patreon. I haven't checked in with my Patreon for a while. I do have one. Um, but but this is the best way to support me. This and and unfortunately, Twitch takes a huge cut. And just spreading the word, and you know, helping helping. Honestly, if you want to help, the the, the secret to what I'm mentoring is getting other people to do it. And so one of the reasons that I do YouTube and, uh, Oh, you don't do the whole thing. Yeah. Cause of the Microsoft thing. Well, I mean there, I, if you can, if you want to talk to me later and then ask me on, 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 on Patreon, we can maybe go look at that. I, I haven't looked at Patreon for a while. I've, I've thought about getting a Venmo too and some things like that. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time setting up my sponsorship methods because I would rather be producing content for people and helping them out and thing. So I, I, I don't, I probably should, I probably should spend more time setting up that stuff. I know other very successful people, uh, do spend a certain amount of time setting up all that stuff. And I would rather be coding or writing books or something. So, so that's, that's what's up. Um, do I still do one-on-one mentoring? So I would like more than anything to go back to doing one-on-one mentoring, but I actually started an initiative that fell on its face because I couldn't get anybody to do it. It was called, um, the sustainable open, um, independent learning soil. And I had logo and t-shirts and everything. And I was trying to train other teachers and would-be mentors uh, in how that they could start their own mentoring. And I was hoping to go viral with it. But it turns out nobody wants to do it. 
No, the people that want to do it don't have enough time to do it or they don't think they can do it or they don't, you know, but, and I'm trying to tell them like, oh, you can actually do this on the side and like piano lessons. If, if we could get 50% of the technologists who have the skills to just find one or two other people to train, to take under their wing and to help learn what they know. They don't have to, you don't have to babysit them. You, you, you do like a scout master or like a merit badge counselor. You like, you answer their questions, you guide them, you send them on their way. And you have, if we, if we could just get 50% of the tech people to do this, this is where AFK works comes from, you know, away from the keyboard, um, the association for federated knowledge workers. If we could get, um, if we could get more people to do that, we would, we would win. And there are a lot of people who don't think they have any mentoring ability. They don't have enough. I guarantee you, if you know more than somebody else, then you, you are in a position to help them answer questions and stuff. And, and this is actually one of the things that, you know, I mean, I've had a little bit of drama with certain streamers and YouTubers before, but at the end of the day, the thing that, that has helped me get over any of that has been that these people, whether they're doing it to pump up their YouTube and they just like the attention, it doesn't matter. They're still doing it. Right. And so they're spending an extremely large amount of time. I now, unfortunately, I feel like I, I have to do more because a lot of the stuff they're, that they're sharing is just wrong. Um, as they say, the more likely you are to hear from somebody, the less likely are they are to have something valuable for, to you, for you to hear. That's true. I believe it. And that goes for me too. So one of the things, one of the things about working in corporate America for a really great team uh, is, oh, Linux tips is coming in. Oh my God. One of the reasons for that, we're just we're getting a raid. We got 84 people on a raid. And this is, I'm actually making a YouTube video right now. I'm just wrapping up a Unix, a Unix video, uh, a little bit of a video. Thank you for that. Um, is I just, one of the, one of the, the, the ways to get around this is by, if you have one foot in corporate America and you have, or wherever, right. And you have another foot in the mentoring world, then you can kind of keep up to date and academia and education and all of them that they mean well, but they don't, they're not, they become irrelevant really fast because they're not there. And that happened for me too. I mean, when I was at skill stack, I was learning crazy things. I learned go in 2014 and started doing all of that, but I didn't really make, um, I didn't really make, you know, containerization and virtualization a priority other than for being able to run, you know, Mac on windows and excited and vice versa. So that I could do my stuff at my business because I was so busy and focused on the business and the learning and the teaching. And if you, you ask any teacher with 300 students down in a high school in America, for example, they're, they're not keeping up. They're not, they can't, they can't make new curriculum. And be perfect. So, so mentors are uniquely, and, and then it goes, that goes for somebody like Linux tips, by the way. Linux Tips has done crazy, amazing things, helping people learn and go forward. I think that this is really where the future is. I really do. I think that this is where, you know, the future of education is going to go. It's going to start out in a sharing economy with people who like to be seen. And that goes for Linux Tips. It's very, Linux Tips is very, very, very entertaining. Uh, I'm less entertaining, but, you know, I'm still here. Uh, you know, Prime Age is very, very entertaining. And I mean, we have a lot of people that, that are meant to be there to help us learn. And if we can give those people who have a real sincere desire to help others learn and grow and who also have jobs, <laughs> that's not, that's not just teaching. I think we could really change the world. I really do. And, and I'm not the only one who thinks this. Ted Dintersmith is the guy you can go follow who does talks about this a lot. He was from corporate America. Uh, you know, there's, you know, Sir Ken Robinson has talked about it in a different way. And thank you for all the praise and comments. But what I'm trying to say is that, as, is that if each one of us who thinks that we don't know something, especially during this holiday season, if we can find someone to give our skills to, and, 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 and it doesn't mean we have to be weird about it, right? Um, and by the way, if you are looking for skills, reach out to somebody who has the skills, who has a career that you think you want and offer to pay them, you know, 20, 30 bucks an hour and say, hey, I would love to pay you for your time. Can I just, I, I, I don't want you to like babysit me, but I, I would love to pay you for, to ask you a few questions. And, you know, if you reach out like that, if you reach out, you, you never know, you might be able to find somebody and you might be able to encourage one-on-one -on -one mentoring to happen. So while I can't say that I'm doing one-on-one -on -one mentoring right now, um, I can say that, you know, I mean, here's speaking of Skillstack, that was where we made our PyLights program. <laughs> uh, 
you know, this is the program we made so that they can animate the thing. So, so while, you know, I can't say that we're doing one-on-one mentoring, uh, that we are blessed, um, at this time with, with, with Twitch, honestly, I, I think if Twitch were to, they won't because they're money driven, but I think if Twitch were to realize how powerful a platform they have for education, if they, if they were to get a clue and, and you know, you, somebody said something negative about Microsoft owning GitHub, but I tell you something about GitHub, Get, GitHub realizes the value of education and you know, they've set up GitHub university. Uh, a lot of these companies are coming around because people don't learn their stuff and then they can't make money because they, people don't buy the stuff that because they don't know how to use it. Uh, they don't even have an education category. I know it's absolutely nuts. Um, uh, I'm doing a, a work about dark trace. Do you know something about it? You can help me. Uh, maybe, maybe not right now. We're in the middle of this little video, but, but after that, um, I should have been in the category a long time ago. Yeah. And we have the knowledge foundation, which found me some time ago, uh, which is kind of a, a group of people that are based on education uh yeah we got our hot tubs and beaches yeah we got that we got tons of that man we got that for days because it makes money it makes money and you know you know what's really sad is that you know for being as woke a company that twitch is it does make you wonder right i mean i know that amazon got a hold of them and everything but you know they they talk a big game about you know social justice and and all this great stuff and twitch does amazing things but at the end of the day, they're just like every other company. If they're not making money, they don't give a shit. They don't. In fact, they're they're legally bound to not give a shit unless about anything but money. That's what that's the definition of a of an S corporation. Uh, Twitch is a revolution, really. It's undercover, under education, hack, in plain sight. Yes. Yeah, they're a corporation. Uh, Amazon is going to need smart people. They're going to get. Well, th this is what's happening: is that Amazon, GitHub, Microsoft, to a degree. They are all realizing that there's nobody learning their platforms and companies are deciding to not use their platforms for, you know, AWS and things like that because they can't find anybody who knows how to do it. And so now you're starting to see these companies like turn to Twitch to try to evangelize, you know, their platforms and stuff because like, oh God, nobody wants to learn how to do this stuff. And now their, their bottom line is finally being affected. Their bottom line is finally being affected because they can't get anybody to, to do it. And then the company is like, well, we can't hire anybody with these skills. So we're going to pick this other thing over here because we have people with those skills. And 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 then you, you get them and they, they, they're like they're like having a they're like having a moment. Right. And they're like, well, God, we need to invest in education. And obviously we can't wait around for for, you know, the 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 the, the, the socialist version of it, which is, you know, public education. So they're dumping Go Google in particular. They're dumping gobs and gobs of money into education now because because they want to, you know, you got to have an educated workforce. And if they're not educated enough to do the job, they're not going to do the job. So the almighty dollar is finally coming, coming home to roost and people are doing it. This is something I wanted to do, dollar or not, in, since 2013. And the main reason I wanted to do it is because I, I saw the power that learning tech skills gives you in this society, a society where all of the, the people with crazy, crazy amounts of money want your magic power. And, and there's a quote from Mr. Robot, which I will not re repeat right now. If you if you know Mr. Robot, I'm gonna encourage you to think about the moment where Vera first meets Mr. Robot, he meets Elliot. He meets Elliot and he says he says something. He goes, "Damn Elliot, damn Elliot, I want your power. I want that power so hard. I want that power so much." <laughs> Tech skills are power. They're magic. They're power and everybody knows it and so the one thing you can do in our society if you can bear to learn tech and stick with it is is learn to code learn to do linux learn to do these things because these things are going to separate you like a way above everybody else and the other thing that's really great about it is that these are the things that people that companies who have money want and so when the when the fintech stuff when the finance stuff went to town where was all the money? It was all in people who knew tech and knew the fintech stuff, right? So if if you want to, seriously, if you want to change your stars, if if you want to go from a service job where you're busting your ass for the same amount of time 
except for you're doing it. Is, I mean, it, learn a tech skill. It may be hard for you to learn a tech skill, but when you learn enough tech skills to get even a beginner entry level jobs, and I've got, you know, tons and tons of refer referrals from people who have said, hey, I got, I learned a minimal amount of this or this, and then I got me this job, and now I'm making double the money. So uh, the job slowed down from hiring. A lot of people overhired, but the people who got overhired are not, the, the, secret, the secret to getting through the overhiring thing is to learn operational skills and don't learn development skills only. The people who are get, who got canned, they were all developers, almost all of them. The people that are keeping this stuff running, that they already have running, they're not losing their jobs. No. This happens every time. We saw this in the dot-com bust. In the dot-com bust, I was in dot-com, I was making dot-com money, and then I switched over to systems administration because I had Linux skills, and I kept my job, and everybody else lost their job. Like, literally, tw like out of 20 people, I was three, three people left. The rest of them all got outsourced to Brazil and other things. So the, the magic combination is programmer skills and operations skills. And in my opinion, I, don't, I would never, ever work for a 100% software development job. Because those projects go away all the time. They're like, they're just poof. They just poof. They go away and you work your ass off and there's, they, they, they overpromise. We Karst was just in here talking about it. They overpromise. You can't deliver. You end up looking like the bad guy because the salespeople don't care. Uh, you know, Phil Knight gets up in front of a news person and says, this thing's going to be done in two weeks and there's no way it's ever going to get done in two weeks. That happened to me. And they just, they keep, they keep doing it. There's been layoffs across the country, but not, not, not in tech operations. No. No, no. And, and operations is the place that's not getting laid off. Yeah, because because they need they they companies, even the stupidest companies are too paranoid to let go of the people that are keeping their systems running. Yeah, learn to learn to build and learn to sell a little bit and you'll be unstoppable. Absolutely. Uh, they they need the server gnomes. They do. They need the server gnomes to keep everything running. And so when the economy gets bad. If you're already there and you have a proven trustworthy track work record of keeping things running and and efficient, you're fine. You usually won't be making as much money as the software people. So here's 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 the secret. The secret is learn to code and get good with middleware coding in particular. If you're going to do operations stuff, get good with Linux scripting, get good with Go, get good with glue languages, get good with Python, get good with automations, you know, Terraform, Ansible, all of that. And then also get good with writing middleware so that you can be a platform engineer and develop integration layers so that your software developers can have something to use. And now you own the stuff that matters. You own the stuff that, that they have to use to communicate with the systems, the legacy systems. That's what I'm building right now. Uh, because I'm, I'm building, because if you, um, when, when we're doing, when you're building all those systems, they, they need, it's like the database administrators. They don't ever lose their job. When's the last time you heard a database administrator lose their job? Never. <laughs> they never. They always leave on their own for more money. I, in, in, in 30 years of working, I have never met, I mean, it's hard to find a database administrator these days. It's, that title's kind of hard to find. I have never found a database administrator lose their job, ever. Uh, even even one who completely destroyed a corporate database because they were off the rails, uh, yeah. <laughs> but but you're in charge of like keeping everything running and and that stuff. They they yeah, snap. Who was the DBA? What did he do wrong? Did he like did he like tank? Usually the DBAs that lose their job is for cause. It's because they've like really screwed up. Yeah, they usually like destroy the corporate database somehow, and they're like, oh, you're out of here. But the ones that are good, they they're 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 fine they're set forever <laughs> so uh i uh let's see oh, fire the people yes it's the people with pager duties yes so i don't know i mean this is this is kind of the end of this this is kind of a long-winded video i wanted i think i said it was going to be five or ten minutes and it ended up being this you know what it's sunday i always get like this on sunday so you asked the perfect question for sunday Sunday, I always get kind of retrospective on things. I kind of like look back and like, what went wrong? What did I do wrong? What could I have done differently? <laughs> what, you know, how come I'm, you know, I can't do the right thing 
Why isn't God, I'm not even kidding, why isn't God helping me? I am, My heart is in the right place. I'm trying to do all the right things. Why does God have it in for me? Why does God, call? and then every time, every time I get like that, because I do believe in God in a weird way, not the way you do. I don't believe in some angry white guy in the sky. But, but when I look back and it's Sunday, so I, I get like this because I was Mormon all those years. And I do believe stuff happens for a reason to an extent. And I have to say that throughout all of this pain and suffering that as of this moment I'm probably helping more people than I was helping when I was just doing it one-on-one at the time I was limited to only helping people who had $60 an hour to pay which in America unfortunately is just the elite I had like dentists and optometrist kids and banker children and stock broker children and you know, these just some of these these parents were really obnoxious, you know, and uh, and so, you know, I, um, you know, I, I always it always bothered me, even though I had I had one girl who drove 40 minutes for five years. She drove 40 minutes to come wherever I was to come to my lessons. She went on to she was in a rural area. She went on to run the show at her school. She started an entire show for a computer consulting. And so often she would come to me for at least half of that time. And she would just sit here and rant about how nobody was pushing themselves and nobody was learning anything. And can you believe they did this and stuff? And so she would just come and she would just share uh, with Doris and I, she would just sit there and it was just, I got it just, it's just, ugh, I'm going to have our time. I'm going to cry because she was, she knew she was hungry. She, she had aspirations. She wanted to do something with her life. And and for the first three years of her coming to see me, I had no idea she was commuting 40 minutes every time. Every single time she was driving 40 minutes. She was driving from, um, oh God, what's it? What's the name? It's like in between here and Asheville, if you know where that is. It's right. And, you know, and eventually it was, you know, when all this went down, she had to stop. But so I'm glad I was there for her and so many others. But, but you know, now, now I get... I get emails from people from the Philippines. I get a two page email from a guy from the Philippines and, and it's like, you know, you've changed my stars. Those are the exact words. I, I was a farmer in the Philippines and now I am doing all of this other stuff in my country. And I was able to do this because of the tech skills from watching you. So, so yes, I'm reminding myself why I do this. Um, it takes a tremendous amount of energy and, when the trolls come in and they say, Oh, Hey, look, you know, loser old guy in his basement. And they do. I can just, it just rolls off my back. I'm like, I have overwhelming evidence that people have been helped by this and you can help people too. Linux tips, those kind of people, uh, the prime agent, you know, they, they are helping. And, um, and yeah, we have people, we have trolls in here who come in here and have fun with me, but that's different, uh, than, than the other people who actually mean it. So, um, I don't do one-on-one mentoring, but I, I guess I do. I, I would like to be able to do one-on-one mentoring and I, I do miss it. I do. I really do. And so that's all I'm going to say there. Um, uh, I, I, I'm going to end though with an invitation. If you know tech and there's anybody in your circle who is struggling, who has the potential to at least consider tech, not everybody does, including my stepson doesn't want anything to do with it he could do it he just doesn't care uh and you know you owe it to yourself and to society i think it's a social contract personally so i'm going to remind you of your social contract the social contract with being a member of humanity is that you share what you know you don't need to be in a scarcity mentality it's not like if you share what you know with somebody else that you're not going to get the job or they're going to take your job no, that's not how it works. How it works is that person gets a job. They change their life. You feel good. You get to go on. You get better at what you do in the process of explaining it to them. And so you end up learning things you didn't even know. And that's happened to me on Twitch like crazy. So whether or not you want to start, I, I've noticed we've had a lot of Twitch streamers start up again. Uh, some of whom have directly credited me and said, hey, you know, I, I heard Rob talk and now I'm streaming. You don't have to know a lot to do this, but we need more people uh, to share. We just need more people to share. That's it. We need them to share. We need them to make mistakes together. You don't even have to be good. I mean, God knows I've made horrible mistakes in front of everybody constantly. And 
it's it's hard it's hard to put yourself out there but if you're capable of doing if you can't put yourself out there fine but if you you don't need to put yourself out there to go find one or two or three people that you can maybe reach out to in a non cringy weird way hey you want me to help you learn tech dude you know that's kind of weird right but you'll know you'll know search inside you know listen to the spirit as as they used to tell me um and and you'll find you'll find a way to to make a difference and and i i truly believe that and there's no better time to talk about that than right now right now hey dumb chicken right how are you so this is this is the time of the holidays a lot of people are focused on advent of code and that's fine i kind of threw some shade at it the other day but um but i gotta tell you oh thank you for the sub but i gotta tell you one of the best things that you can do during the holidays is forget about yourself for a second i know crazy to say that right thank you for the sub forget about yourself for a second you know, do something that's embarrassing. Uh, reach out. Um, you know, yeah, thank you for the subs. Great subs. Um, and honestly, you're going to have a little bit of extra time. So you can spend that time developing yourself, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but what if you develop yourself and you help somebody else at the same time? So maybe you took a, you took a friend along for the ride. You know, there's so many methods of like pair programming and sharing with each other now that you could you could find a friend, uh, maybe your spouse, even maybe your son or daughter or whatever. You know, you just say, hey, let's let's try something crazy. Let's try to do this and that and figure it out. Right. Uh, so, yeah. And and, and that's um, that's all I'm going to leave you with is seek an opportunity to learn but maybe learn together with somebody else and um you don't have to do it publicly on twitch but uh it's fun it's fun it's actually it's much more fun when you learn together with somebody yeah and i gotta i i'm gonna end this youtube video now so i'm gonna hit the stop button because that was way too long but hopefully that i'll put some more details in the in the thing here but the answer to do you still want to mentor is no <laughs> and that's why thanks